Hi folks, good day wherever you are. I'm Aslin Blow from AZ Entertainment. Um, today we are going back to Malaysia to join Shannon Lim in Kuala Lumpur as she shows us one of her favorite childhood desserts. But before we do that, let's go say hello to our two panelists. Um, I was going to say both in France, but they're not. <laughs> one was brought up. One was brought up in France. Let's go say let's go say hello to Cook with Sally, who's in the UK. Hi Sally. Hi, Aslan. Um, hello, everyone on the panel. Hi, Shannon. I'm Sally from. Uh, uh, I live in uh, the UK, and I have a blog called uh, www.cookwithsally.com. And it's nice to be here. It's, Thank it, you. It's it's good. It's good to have you. Um, Thank you. Oh, we seem to have an extra Shannon joining us, but that's okay. Right, let's go talk to Lisa while Shannon gets her stuff sorted. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, some of you probably already know me. My name's Lisa, obviously, just as Lynn said. I have a blog called Italian Kiwi, and I live in France, but my husband's Italian, and I'm from New Zealand, so uh, yeah, there we have it. And um, I'm very happy to be here today, and I'm very curious to know what Shannon's going to cook. As, as uh, we all are, and it looks and it looks like we might have to wait a few more minutes to find out because Shannon seems to be having some technical difficulties. Um, she'll she'll come back to us. Ah, here she is. Right. So let's go back to Shannon and see what's happening. So, right. Can you see me? We can certainly see you, Shannon. Um, would you like to tell us what you are cooking for us today? Okay, um, today I'll be making sago gula melaka. It's one of my favorite Malaysian dessert. It's basically sago pearls drenched in coconut milk and um, palm sugar syrup. So it's just a dessert. Okay, so the the sago pearls. Could we have a have a look? What what do they look like? Do they look like tiny little polystyrene balls? Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see. It's tiny little balls of um, pearls. It's starch, some starch. That is opaque in color. When you cook it, after you cook it, it will be translucent. Okay, great. So um, uh, they, they look a little bit like sort of slightly bigger um, couscous. Couscous. Um, they look a little bit like couscous, just slightly bigger, right? And white in color, by the way. Yeah. Is it like tapioca? I yeah. was just going to ask then. Yes, is it like tapioca? Yes, that's it, right. It is. It is a little it, bit it like is tapioca. It is a little bit like tapioca pearls, I think. Um, okay, we're going to go back to Shannon. I think Shannon's experiencing a, a slight difficulties. Perhaps it's raining in Kuala Lumpur. Right, <laughs> Shannon. We're back. Yeah, it's uh, kind of drizzling over here. Mm. Okay. So, so this is. Um, is this a very common dessert? Yes, it's a very common dessert, and it's a um, Nyonya, uh, Nyonya recipe as well. Nyonya is uh, the Chinese Muslim, uh, Chinese and Malay culture combined together, and that's what is created with the dishes in okay. Malaysia. All right, let's let's get cooking because you told me in the green room just now it'll take about ten minutes to cook, and we can chat while it's cooking. So let's let's get started then. Yeah. Um, Bring the water to boil in the pot, then put in the sago pearls. Okay. Cook it for about 10 minutes, and when it's cooked, you know when it's cooked, uh, when the sago pearls have turned translucent, it will become slight, there will be some white dots still in the middle if it's not cooked. So make sure that it's fully cooked through, it's fully translucent before you take it out and uh, run through the cold water to get a bit of the starch. So we cook like for 10 minutes and that's, that's it. Okay. Then after that we prepare the coconut milk and palm sugar syrup. So the, the, the ingredients are basically besides the sago pearls. What makes the dish is the uh, coconut milk and the palm sugar. Palm sugar syrup. Yes, the gula malaka. Okay, alrighty. Um, the gula malaka is basically uh, it's the syrup that is cooked down from the coconut flour, um, the coconut bud flour from the coconut tree. So it, after it's been boiled down, it pours into a bamboo, um, 
into a bamboo, what do you call that? Container. Yeah. And it will become like this chip. Okay. So um, a, a good substitute for, for folks who cannot get gula malaka. Gula is sugar. Malaka is malaka. Gula malaka. For those of us who cannot get it, uh, what would you suggest? You can use a uh, jaggery, um, the Indian jaggery, uh, or molasses. Okay. Yeah, molasses and sugar. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, you can find. Pardon? So a good good substitute would be jaggery. Okay, I didn't think of that jaggery. Yeah, all right, jaggery yeah, or molasses. Okay, molasses is probably easier to get. Yeah, I no, suppose for us in Europe, in, in the West, molasses uh, would be easier to get. Or dark, soft brown sugar. Ah, oh yes. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Uh, yes, dark, soft brown sugar. Sorry. Yes, dark, soft brown or sugar. Or dark brown sugar, she said. Yeah, so soft dark brown sugar is a good one. What about what? What about the, the whole okay. recipe? The whole recipe itself, um, Shannon. If people can't get access to sago pearls and people can't get access to um, tapioca pearls, even, is there? Can we cook this dessert with anything else? What? If you can't get both the pearls, um, the closest that that's almost similar to the pearls is the chia seed after you soak it. Chia seed. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, chia seed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. After you soak it, it will become kind of like you know curly balls. The yeah. The curly balls. So. That's... Look like to me once they've been soaking. Um, okay, interesting. So, which means that you can even use basil, basil seeds then um, for, for, for that. Okay. Uh, yeah, basil seeds, yes. Yeah, okay, cool. But basil seeds won't be sticky, right? Um, basil, if I'm not mistaken. Basil seeds after, after soaking will still be gelatinous, very similar, because um, there is an Indian Arabic dish called faluda, which uses, um, which uses basil, basil seeds um, for it. Right. Hmm? I've never heard of your oh, it's beautiful. It's pink. It's pink. It's made from rose syrup. Um, really, really yummy. Yeah, I've only I've read about it. I've never tried it. Yeah, you obviously forgot my post on food is no, from I was thinking, did you not a post about that now? I uh, sure did. Right, back to Shannon. Back to Shannon. So how we how are we doing, Shannon? Where where are we in the in the cooking process? Um. It's going to take a while to cook it through, but it's you need to stir it so that it doesn't stick to the pot because um, the starch from the pot will leak, uh, leak out and the water will become starchy. So make sure you stir it. Okay. I um, just want to share a bit about the sago pearls. Um, it's how how it's from the sago tree. They will. Use the stem of the sago tree. I've seen it in Sabah, where I live. They, they have they stick a few nails onto a board, and then they use the stem uh, of the tree. They grate it against the nails, and then you get all the uh, flour that comes out, the powder, and from there they will make it into sago pearls. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And another uh, another famous thing that uh, that the sago tree is famous for is the sago worms. Worms. Which in Sabah in Borneo, yes, the sago worms. Ooh. Which is a delicacy <laughs> in Borneo. <laughs> Ooh, how do they eat it? Do they eat it? <laughs> you can eat it live. You can eat it raw, but it's still wiggling. Ooh, duck. Yes. It's very nutritious and full I'm of protein. Sure. And I'm, sure. Of it. Yes. I'm sure it is. <laughs> that's, that's, yes. I, I, I cannot, I cannot try it. <laughs> oh, they can uh, do it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to get Shannon to make a trip to Sabah and show us how to eat the sago worms one day. Rather her than us. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I just wanted to very quickly touch on something Shannon said earlier. She mentioned that the sago, the pudding she's doing today, 
is uh, from the Nyonya community. Um, and Nyonya is, is, is a very unique um, cultural community in Singapore and Malaysia. Um, that is um, basically the Chinese um, having taken on Malay um, culture, Malay language um, through intermarriage as well as you know just living living together. So, so basically over, over the years these two cultures have combined and, and, and created a totally new cuisine in these two countries that have yeah. characteristics from both cultures. Yeah. Sounds nice. It does. So, so um, desserts. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about Western dessert. Um, uh, no, sorry, Asian desserts, or specifically Southeast Asian desserts. To me, I'm a Southeast Asian, born and bred in Singapore, and I love Southeast Asian desserts. But I think our desserts are an acquired taste. I would agree. I find them. Well, not all of them, but the ones I've tasted, a lot of them so sweet that mm. I, I, they're just too sweet for me usually. I like yeah. the flavors, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think, Sally? Um, even, even maybe even Indian desserts, you know, but perhaps yeah, the Southeast Asian sure. ones are not as, not, not, not as, not as, uh, perhaps are more difficult actually to take to than Indian desserts, like Warfi, in the Indian Warfi and Gulab Jamun and all that. What do you think, Sally? I think gulab jamun, I like jalebi. We call it jalebiya in Baku. Yeah, but that's in, right. in India they call it jalebi. But yeah. apart from that, the rest I find it they cook everything, almost everything with ghee. So I find it is ghee. I like ghee in my paratha, but they, it, ghee, and I find it's too sweet. It's not horrible, but I find it's too sweet, similar. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, I, apart from jalebi, I don't like very much. I find it's too sweet and sticky and. Sweet. But the beer is beautiful, though. Sweet, sweet, sweet and rich. What do you What do you think, Shannon? Do you think Do you think Asian desserts are easily taken on by West Westerners? Um, I think some of it, yes. Some of it, uh, I, I I do agree that a lot of it is very uh, very sweet mm. and very rich. Mm. But there's quite a few that's uh, that's loved by a lot of Westerners. Mm. Like? Um, it, it, like um, ice kacang, like the, uh, our nyonya kueh. Mm. Mm. It's, quite, it's quite interesting. Actually, you know what? I don't think that it's the richness and the sweetness. I think it's just a completely different entity. Asian it's true that they use different spices. There are different spices and um, flavors that are un very unusual for for That's a right. That's right. Think about think about our Western desserts. Um, you know, we talk about say, uh, 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 oh, give me give me some. Oh yeah, sticky toffee pudding. I mean, how sweet and sickly is that? Yeah, but I don't like that it's either. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's nice. I'm a spotted dick. And the oh, trifle. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, they're nice. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Sally. <laughs> oh, English. English. Oh, I'm sorry, but English pudding, they, they are the best. English puddings are the best. Oh, we'll go back. We'll go back to we'll go back to Shannon. Yes, with a name like Spotted Dick, I'm sure they are. Back to Shannon. It's not spotted, it's just the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not making it any better. All right. Okay. Back, back to back to the serious stuff of cooking in quality. It's still cooking. Um, it's gonna take. Yeah, it's still some intestinal transmission. Some is still have the white spots in the middle. So how much time more do we have? <laughs> oh, we've got we've got we're okay. We we start a little bit late. We've still got about 15, 20 minutes. But you know the show will go on as a show uh, for as long as it needs to. I tell you what, we've got we've got a okay. Dutchman. We've got a Dutchman in the audience. So Norbert, this is a question for you. What do you think of Asian desserts, specifically say Malaysian, um, Indonesian desserts? Tell us in the comment stream. We'd like to hear. Um, so you, I will tell you when I get to Hong Kong at Christmas. Because oh. that's what I'm going. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. And then I'm going to Bali. I'm going to Hong Kong, then I'm going to Bali for New Year. So oh, I'm so curious. 
I've wow. never been. Oh, haven't you? Oh, okay. Nice. Very nice. It's very good. I actually I wanted to go back to Shannon because Shannon, you're Chinese, aren't you, Shannon? Um, oh. Yes, I'm from Chinese descent. Yes. Okay. So, um, so, so, what about Chinese desserts? Um, I don't think when I think of Chinese cuisine, I definitely don't think of desserts. What, what do you think? What, what sort of Chinese desserts do you do you have that's um, different or? Um, we yeah, for Chinese dessert, it's mostly cook cook um, dessert. We use a lot of the ingredients that are in savory as well, and we use it for in in dessert for sweets as well. So, for example, like uh, a lot of people, especially the Westerners, they could not uh, comprehend, or, or to them, it's like so weird for us to have a dessert with red beans, with uh, mung beans, with uh, corn. You know, we we create desserts like. Yeah, and it's so delicious, so easy, like the red bean uh, sweet soup. Mm. It's so easy, you just cook it and then just add some uh, sugar in, some sweetener, and that's a dessert for us. Mm, mm. That's true, that's true. Yeah, so so it's, it's a lot of your desserts are sort of porridgey as well, aren't they, I guess? Like you said, the red bean, the mm. red bean. We've got um, we've got um, Kaza Kiesi, um telling us, let me just say this, okay, never been to Malaysia, must be a beautiful country. He says, "Oh, I absolutely agree." Um, mm, tell us, tell us, sure. tell us some of the the beautiful places to visit, um, Shannon, in Malaysia. Some, there's so many. Um, there's uh, beautiful beaches, beautiful islands, um, like Sifada, which is one of the uh, world's top uh, diving spots and uh, one of the yeah one of the world's yeah. diving spots. We have. We have uh, beautiful rainforests, the national parks. We have um, the, the I think there's the third highest peak in southeast uh, in Southeast Asia. Is that the Mount Kinabalu? Mount Kinabalu, right? Okay. Um, Mount Kinabalu, yes, yes. And we have the uh, caves, the moon caves, which is can fit in seven Boeing oh, wow. plane in there. Yes. Okay. It, it is it is an extremely beautiful country. We've got an answer from Norbert here, so I'm going to bring the answer up. Norbert says that he prefers Asian desserts over Western. In my experience, Asian desserts are more fruit inspired, where Western people are more chemical sugar inspired. Western I'm sure he means Western desserts. Not Western people are more chemical and sugar inspired. <laughs> Asian desserts um, are seen more healthy. Thank you, Norbert. We we appreciate we appreciate that. And um, yes, to Kazakhese's question, Malaysia is, is beautiful. And our plan right now is to go back in August next year for a family wedding. So hopefully, it happens. Wow. Hmm? Yeah, my my niece my niece has a doctor in um, in Melbourne, but she's Malaysian, so she's going back to Malaysia for her wedding. No, is she in Melbourne? I think. She's no. Going. Oh, I have to so wedding. Say that again, Shannon. So where's the wedding? In which part of Malaysia? Oh, Kuala Lumpur. My sister lives in Kuala Lumpur. Her mom. My sister lives in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, as does my mother. Uh, does so many of my family members live there. So um, yeah, Lisa, you were saying something, Lisa. What we what did you? Oh, I only, I'm just thinking I need to organize some long distance travel. Everybody else here is going on a plane somewhere far away. Uh, if I remember correctly, weren't you in New Zealand in May? Oh, yeah, but that doesn't count. That's just going home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not just me. I say the same when they go home. It's not, it's not a holiday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you think Malaysia, the trip in August, is going to be a holiday thing again? <laughs> actually, actually, you I have to clean I, and talk. Yeah, I'm I'm very clever like this. I time all my holidays for weddings, so everybody comes there because my family is massive. <laughs> so it's mine. I know. Yeah. So so no 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 visiting relatives involved in my holiday. Anyway, back, back to back to um, Shannon. So are the sago pearls cooked? Yes, they are cooked. Um, 
a little bit of them are still white in the center, but that's all right. Okay. So, need to stain them on uh, running water, which I'm not doing. I don't have a uh, sink here, so I'm just going to pour it over a sieve. And Is that to prevent them from to... sticking? Do we have to um, um, save them over running yes. water? Okay, to prevent them from sticking. Okay. Yes, ah. them, yeah, prevent them from sticking because the water is starchy. The, the starch has already get out from the hose. I have a question. Okay, Lisa's got a question. So as, as um, Shannon is training those pearls, we'll go uh, to Lisa. Okay, my question is, my the Shannon, you can help me, or Lynn, I'm not sure. Um, so I've only tried to cook, well, tapioca balls, but it's probably the same as sago, a few times, and they dissolved into a gelatinous mass instead of keeping their ball shape. Why would that be? Anybody? <laughs> Shannon, you want to take that question? I've not tried um, tapioca bowls, so I can't advise you on that. For sago bowls, usually you only cook like 10 to 15 minutes. My my guess, my guess would be Lisa. Did you did you put them in cold water and bring to boil like you do pasta? Mm. You don't do that with pasta. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, so, so with with sago pearls and tapioca pearls, yeah. you you have to bring the water to boil, then <laughs> boiling the thing, and then cook them to just that gelatinous state and strain them in cool water. So oh, maybe that maybe that was my problem. I don't know. I'll have to try it again. Yeah, uh, try it again. But you want to put them in, in in hot boiling water as opposed to bring them to boil because then they're getting to that. that then then yeah, they're half cooked before the water comes to boil. And yeah, no, I don't know. I can't yeah, I can't remember what I did a long time ago, and I kind of uh, gave up uh, because I couldn't work out what was going wrong. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Try that and come back to us. What <laughs> yes. you, Sally, do you do you cook with tapioca pearls? Um, no, never, never before. Okay. Uh, she, she, I, uh, it looks like she doesn't want to either. Okay, back to Shannon in the kitchen. So Shannon strained. Ooh. Bit difficult to say. Shannon's strained the sago pearls. <laughs> what do we do? So I'm go, um, right now, going to heat up the coconut milk. Okay. So we put the coconut milk into the pan, into a pot. Sorry, into a pot with a pinch of sugar, and just slightly bring it to simmer. And we're going to flavor it with pandan leaves. Yeah, pandan leaves is very fragrant. It's used in a lot of um, Asia, Southeast Asian desserts. It, usually, what we do, what my mom teach me is to get the essence out from the leaves. We use a fork um, to scrape it along. To but what does it smell head, like? Head yeah, it's much fragrant. Much fragrant. But that's it. Okay. Lin, uh, ask Lin, maybe you can explain it better than me. Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. I'll just go to Sally. Sally's got a question. What is it, Sally? What does it smell like? Is it like um, a basil or, or, or grass, lemongrass? Grass, grass, but not lemongrass. It smells of grass. Uh, oh. Yeah, it smells of grass. And, you know, it's quite funny. I've actually seen it being described as vanilla grass, but it's not. It's very, it's a little musky, but it's definitely a grassy. Um, I, 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 I can imagine. I, I got a picture in my head. Like when you cut the grass and it's raining. Yeah, and, and Indian, you find them in. Uh, you find the essence, the, the, the extract in Indian shops are called Tura. K E W R A. Yeah. yeah. It's very it, uh, Asian. Is very interesting as spice. Yeah. So so yeah so so um those of you who watch Simple Chef for you would have seen this plant in my kitchen. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Which is never yeah. happy during winter, but I'm hoping it'll go, get through another winter this time. Right, <laughs> back to Shannon in KL. In KL. Yeah, this is the plan. Uh, the root will be down here, so this oh. is what it looks like. Oh, oh wait, let me. This is a small plant. The leaves are really small. Usually, it's like is double or triple the size. It is. It is, of course, because Shannon's having problem with her with her connection today. I'll just um. I'll just um. Say that um, it is also the leaf that's used in um, 
pandan pandan red chicken in the Thai cuisine. But I'm going to bring up a few comments actually um, from Sky One Two O Eight. There are quite a number of delicious Malaysian dessert that hasn't been mentioned, like banana fritters, layered cake, cake lapis. Yes, absolutely true. You are absolutely true. Um, pisang goreng. Who doesn't love goreng pisang or pisang goreng? Who doesn't like kueh lapis and cake lapis? You're absolutely right. And, oh, nice um, and then we've got another one. Shireen Force telling us that pandanus has a sweet aroma and scent. Yes, there is a sweetness to it as well. Thank you, folks, and thank you so much for popping in to watch us. Right, um, back to Shannon. So, so you are you. You've been simmering the coconut milk or santan in Malay, and you you put you you put uh, did, it, did you put some leaves in there? Didn't you? You put some leaves in there. Yes. And now you are yeah. fighting. You are fighting the palm sugar. <laughs> yeah, actually, yes. I, I'm fighting palm sugar. And I was wondering if there was an easier way to cut bits off other than exactly what Shannon's doing, but obviously not. Uh, I, I scrape it. I grate it. it. Mm. I grate it much like I would grate a carrot. Yeah, yeah usually it's like we shave it or you, yeah, like Bustin said you can grate it, which I have not never used before. Usually I do it this way, which is much harder. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Asli. Not a I, I, I won't talk about the time where I actually grated my finger as well. Oh, maybe I have talked about that. <laughs> Never mind. Yes. So, so just to recap, folks, we are making um, sago pandan, sago gula melaka. I think the title is. You know, my Malay is short. Um, and we, Shannon has cooked sago pearls um, to just the right um, gelatinous consistency. And she simmered some coconut milk with pandan leaves, um, and she's now getting the laka, uh, which is palm sugar, dark palm sugar. Those of you in the West, the closest relative would be molasses, dark brown sugar, or the Indian jaggery. So now we're going back and joining Shannon in her kitchen when she's done with the gula melaka. It looks she put a lot of love mm -hmm. into it. It's not yeah. just throw it all in. It's she made it with love, I call it. It's made it with love. It's and not love. Is that yeah. an empty? Is that an empty saucepan? Yeah, it's a new saucepan. Okay. So put it in, and with one thing, this is about half. No, this is about quarter of um, the palm sugar. So I will put in one tablespoon of water. Uh, yeah. Just to melt it, just to melt the sugar to make it into a syrup. Okay, so you're going to cara uh, okay, not not actually caramelize it, just making it into a syrup. Okay. Yeah, just to melt it. Okay. And after it melts, then we we'll just put it all together. Um, I forgot. So after you've strained the sago pearls. You can put it straight into a cup or a, a dessert cup like this. Okay. Uh, you can put it in. If you want to make it into a nice mold, uh, to pour it up into another bowl. You okay. Use cool. a bit of coconut oil or some oil to uh, just to. What's the word? Um, yeah, just some oil to wet. Grease the sides. Grease the sides. Yeah, to grease the sides <laughs> yeah, so it can get the fall out. Okay. All right. That's that's great. So what? So you you just you just um, dish out the sago pearls in whatever container you're about to serve it in. We've just we've just got Anne from the Philippines joining us, and and he actually posted. <laughs> First to the recipe today, I believe, using sago pearls, palm sugar, and, and some, some and pandan leaves as well. I do but no coconut milk. His was a drink. Ah. So um this I have to say though, just from personal experience, that the combination of um, palm sugar or dark brown sugar and coconut milk is one of the best flavor combinations there is. 
and then you add pandan leaves to that equation and it is unbelievable, seriously. It makes a fabulous topping for so many plain desserts. I have to find some pandan leaves. Uh, yeah, I could I could just um I could box you some could I and send them off. Although they will be wilted by the time they get to No, you. I don't think they'd be very good, especially the postal system here. Oh dear, I'm not posting to you this Christmas, am I, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise but what about, but what about um, pandan essence? Yeah, pandan essence, um, I, it, it, you can't easily get it in the West unless you have access to, a, to I think, an Indian store specifically, even Chinese store. So you can use pandan essence instead yeah. of like, I might be able to get that. It's a, you know, it's one of those things where bag, beggars can't be choosers and go for it, you know, but it's like using vanilla vanilla essence. Uh, yes. Yeah, I know. Or seeds, yeah. Right. Anyway, back to Shannon. Where are we now, Shannon? In the grand scheme of things. Okay. <laughs> the syrup has already been melted. The sago bowls, you can put it in the fridge to chill it, or if you want it to have it warm, just get it straight. So I have one that's already been chilled and put into a mold that I like to. It up. Oh, I see. Okay, so you actually you actually shape it. Yes, you can shape it if you want, or you can eat it directly in the yeah in a cup like this. No, interesting. Okay, yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. So we've got um, a, a so, quick yeah. Um, to serve, just put coconut milk. Okay. And, and then coconut, that coconut milk, the coconut milk was just simmered with the pandan leaves, wasn't it? That's all. Oh, the sugar. Oh, okay. And a bit of salt, a tiny bit oh, of salt. Okay. And a pinch of salt, a touch of salt. Okay. Yeah, a touch of salt. So. And you up to you how much coconut milk that you want, and. Okay. Mm. Looks yes. nice. Easy. Yeah, I, I think you should I smell this. The coconut butter and it's so yummy. It is, isn't it? For me, it for me, good. it'll be easy on the sago bowls, but go heavy on the palm sugar and coconut. <laughs> I'm going to bring up. I'm going to bring up a comment from Enzef. Um, he, he says we also use palm sugar and pandan leaves a lot in Filipino dishes. I agree with Aslin, these are the best combination. Mm -hmm. Thanks, and Right, back to Shannon. Oh, sorry, Shannon. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. Sally, take a picture, Sally. There you go. Sally, take a picture. Okay, wait, hang on, I Shannon. Have. Okay, there she has. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> All right, well done. Thank you. That looks really good. So, so I I essentially, I mean, yes, every. Very easy. <laughs> Every spoonful is going to contain a little bit of the pearls and, and the milk and the sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And this can be made earlier. You can pre made the day before the sago pearls. You can just chill it. And when you want to serve, just heat up the coconut milk and the palm sugar. Okay. So you have. So is it supposed to be um cold sago pearls, um, cold sago pearls, warm coconut milk? And warm um, sugar, or it doesn't matter. Can the whole thing be cool or cold? Yes, the whole thing. Usually, usually it's cool. Okay. Usually, it's a chill. It's a it's a dessert that yeah, the whole thing is cold, and because it's so hot in Malaysia, so we love okay. everything cold. Okay. And mm -hmm. could you feasibly assemble the lot, put it in the fridge for say two to three hours before your guests come? Or, or, or should it's you better go on? before. Go on. It's better before you serve to put um, the coconut milk and the uh, palm sugar syrup just before serving. Okay. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. so just, right. Just put it together just before serving. Okay. Great. That looks really, really, really great. And says I can almost smell the aroma right on my screen. <laughs> yes. 
definitely. Right. Thank you so much, Shannon. Is there is there a particular time um, uh, that it's more popular in Malaysia, or it's just popular right throughout the year? Surprisingly, you, this is you can't find this much in the restaurants or in the cafes. It's really easy to make, but it's usually something that you make at home. So oh. it's so hot. Yeah, it's so hot throughout the year. We make. Is it one of those desserts that's found at Pasamalaps? Mm, no. No. It in Pasamalam. no, not at Pasamalam. You Pasa not at Pasamalam. Okay. Pa Pasamalam is Pasa is market, Malam is night, so night markets. Um, mm. We've got a question. Um, and it's a very good question, actually. Um, could this be made with rice instead of tapioca? I'm going to let Shannon take that question first. What do you think, Shannon? Pudding rice? You can make a rice pudding with it. Another dessert that's almost similar to this would be the black glutinous rice. Um, yes. Pudding? Yeah, we usually use a glutinous rice instead of the normal rice, normal mm -hmm. white rice. So it's starchy. Okay, yeah. so so Jerry, there you have it. Um, pudding rice will go nicely with it as well. And and if you have access to Chinese stores, as Shannon said, um, black glutinous rice. Uh, mm -hmm. glutinous that, rice. Wow. Yeah, that would go nicely with this dessert as well. Right, Shannon, um, any last words about your dessert and when we might see you again? Well, Hi. any last words? Just enjoy it. Um, it's, you can, yeah, it's something that you can easily make over the festive holidays that, you know, when you're so busy running around with so many things to cook, yeah, this is something that you can easily whip up. And yeah. when will you see me again? Hopefully. Oh, look, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> she's gone. She's gone silent. It's a secret. Actually, we'll come back to her. Sally, I'm just going to get everybody to say to say goodbye because it's 40 minutes past the hour. So, Sally, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, hopefully, we'll be seeing you again using your new cooker. Thank you for having me. And Shannon, I, I think I will give tapioca a go one day. I never appear to be, but it looks quite yummy. So thank you. And thank you for having me. And thank you. Nice to see you, Lisa. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure having you, Sally. And I'm excited to see you at work at your, in your kitchen. And Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, thank, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. And Shannon, you've made me think that I should try uh, find some sago balls or try with the tapioca again. And of course, it was lovely to see you, Lynn, and Sally as well. Thank you, Lisa. Right, Shannon, uh, let me see if she's back. Cause, um, are you back, Shannon, with us? Hopefully. Yes, I'm back. Hopefully we will see you again um, in, in, um, in, in January or, or, or something uh, for the Chinese New Year. A, a recipe or two for the Chinese New Year, that would be really good. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, um, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a shame we had a bit of a problem with the connection, but um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm sure we all, we all enjoyed um, the dessert, and I've never made it, actually, so it would be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we, will, we will be seeing Shannon again soon. I think we are having problems there in Malaysia, so I shall take us out. Thank you so much. But before I do, I'm going to bring up one last comment here, actually, from Shireen Fors. I live in Sweden, and the Swedes were very skeptical in the beginning about sago pearls. But once the spoonfuls of sago, coconut milk, and palm sugar mix hit their taste buds, it was definitely a burst of, a burst of flavors. It's something I, she says, I am expected. It's something I'm expected to bring at, at potlucks. <laughs> um, okay, wheat germ. Shireen suggests wheat germ as an alternative in this pudding. So that's something for you all to think about. Righty ho. Um, we uh, have had a slightly longer episode than usual. I'd like to thank everybody who's been watching and commenting, and um, join us again soon um, on Savor the Flavor, Simply Singapore. And next month, Savor the Flavor brings you a special mini series of Christmas around the world. But for now, it's goodbye from me 
and everybody here on the panel, and especially from Shannon in Kuala Lumpur. Thank you so much, Shannon. Bye, everyone. See you all soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.